everyone. Thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary. Your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women healing through storytelling. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us back on Victory Over Circumstance. Um, I really appreciate you guys' viewership and listenership. Um, It's been an amazing ride so far. We're getting better and better as we go. And uh, definitely urge you to listen to our past episodes, uh, the open letter to the fashion industry, the episode with Eugenia, and of course, the introductory episode, which was number one. Um, Today, we have a very, very special guest, my good, dear friend, Sharina Gutierrez. Hi, everybody. Whoa, that bitch right <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hi. How is everyone doing? I am really excited to be here with you. Thank you for having me. And I'm so proud of you and this journey. Thank you so much. This is so exciting. The view is amazing. It's a vibe. This is a vibe. It's a vibe. It is. See, if you're listening, we need you guys to, as always, get on YouTube and make sure you watch the video. Um... It's a vibe, like she said. It's We're in downtown LA. We're overlooking the whole of LA. I can see the Hollywood sign, the observatory. You can see all the pollution Korea in LA. Town. <laughs> all the Santa pollution. Monica. All of it. We're in a good space. We're, so, dr- um, we're, we're in dreamland right come now. Come see our faces. But yes, I'm so happy to have you here today. You're an amazing, amazing, beautiful soul. I knew it from the day we met, and I just <laughs> love. I'm just going back yeah. on how we met. And I'm just loving the evolution that is Sharina. I am Shireen Love. And we'll get into all of that. I'm just loving how this woman has evolved from just an already amazing person to just another, you know, really embracing her higher self. And you've seen that if you follow her, um, you've seen that evolution. It's, be- it's been beautiful to watch. You now have two babies i have two you have technically two. three four including oh. the man oh i was like four where's the third okay. and fourth? um Oop. but we're gonna get into it like i think we should just start for context how we met and then just get oh, into your story you you, you want to share this story we're, we can share for sure i mean you're you're hilarious like the way you tell it is hilarious we don't got to get into it but we we met we met in south africa <laughs> yeah like of all places the most like like farthest from here <laughs> literally the farthest from la from la but we um we we didn't leave each other for like almost 48 hours i yeah, extended yeah. my my flight yes. um we went i met her at the job and then yeah. it was so quiet in the makeup yeah and everybody was being super tense and you know like any modeling job everyone's yeah. in their corner and you know it's so like oh. and i put on miguel what was that song by miguel i think like, you put on adorn adorn just and this girl just started play. dancing. And I was like, that's it's what's up. There's somebody that's like like me, but I was still shy because like it was one of my maybe one of my first bigger jobs in Cape Town because I had just gotten there and I was like there for like a few months. Yeah. And I was like, oh, thank God, some Americans. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, here she is in true American fashion, just being loud <laughs> and being funny and dancing and just, you know, switching up the vibe on set. And I love that about you. Yeah. She, you know. um, I, I definitely had that um, D, don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, and <laughs> you know what? It's amazing and I loved it. Still so here have. she was, just dancing. And I think 
you asked me to get into one of your videos and I was like, sure. So we started vibing, vibing and we're like, and dance. what are you doing after this? And I'm like, I'm going to meet up with my friends. We're going to go to dinner here and then we're going to go to another little spot. And she's like, okay, I'm going to switch my flight up. And she literally called her agent, switched her flight so that she could go to her. And you had a, you a, had a shoot. shoot in Johannesburg, which like, is another major city, like, really early. That mo- the next morning. Yeah, and you were supposed to leave like straight after the shoot, I believe. Right? Yeah, and I was like, no, I could take the. I love it here. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I love it here, and I've only been here for like uh, a few hours, and I Just would to like work. to Sea Town. Sea Town, and she's like, okay, and I was like, I'll and be I, re- a tour guide. I, met, I was like, I really like her, and I don't want to leave. Yay. So I ended up taking a flight with the direct, like the cat, the director of like the the next job. And I didn't sleep. Remember, we didn't sleep. I didn't sleep. We did not sleep that whole night. Oh, true fashion. True, just fashion. You know what I mean? (laughs) That was fun, though. It was fun. Um, I enjoyed it. Johannesburg was a lot of fun, too. Uh, It was just a different vibe. Yeah. Um, I I loved where we were in Cape Town. Yeah. I've been before. I went for Mm H&M. And I was younger, so I was, like, afraid to see town by right, myself right, right. you know so it's your chance to finally just go just out there. go out and i had you cool vibes and all of Dinner our friends was <laughs> hilarious it was catastrophic omg you know okay we'll just give a little antidote so we don't go too far off in there yeah <laughs> do you want to tell it there's this dude oh yeah because we we're all at dinner and we're yeah we're perfectly fine to like pay for our own dinner one of my friends had a had a uh, what a was it? Tinder, Tinder date. date. Oh, Pull Tinder. Pull up on us. Swipe and, left. And join us. She should have swiped left. She had a Tinder date join us at the dinner table. And we're like, all right, sure, you can come. So he comes. And you can and get into it. We're we're like ordering food and wine and all of this stuff. Like, and he's ordering a and lot. And he's ordering like the nicest bottle of wine and this and that. The check comes and... You know, like like any gentleman, you're going to be ordering like that. At least pick up the bill. But he's like from Australia talking about how he got money and all of this stuff. Listen, mm-hmm. I got into it with... Didn't even... <laughs> listen, I got into it with one one guy that I sort of dated in Cape Town because... Um, and he was French. But I, I, you know, it is... Is chivalry an American thing? Because like most guys will pay for dates. Yeah. This guy... He didn't even dinner. like... Offer to pay for the girl, for his girl. Right. Like we're not even telling you to pay for us. All of us. Like pay, pay for, for your, girl. your girl that you are going on a date with that you probably are trying to get some boom boom from. Okay. Pay for her butter chicken and that lovely wine. <laughs> <laughs> she was a butter chicken. She ordered that butter she chicken. Butter and chicken. then he made some stupid joke about some chicken crossing the street, and then you were like, What? Mess, something about your chicken and you don't got no lettuce. Stop talking about no damn chicken. And I, we were on the floor. Because old man, Mans was talking about how he didn't have money to pay for all of us. Then why'd you come to the table and Yeah, we didn't, we didn't want him to pay for us. But I was like, you here over here talking about butter chicken, but you got no lettuce. You ain't got no lettuce. <laughs> so anyway, clearly there's just... Oh, and there's a, so the, the story keeps going on and on it's, and on, you know, but it was a beautiful story and we had tons of we fun. We had tons of fun. So I love that. And we danced the night away. We sure did. Yeah. And then we met back up in uh, the U.S., obviously, back in L.A. And we even met, we, damn, we met each other all over the world because then yeah. I went back to my family in London and, and you I, had come I was to London, in London and she's like, hey, I'm in town come chill with me and I'm like sure so we like went around town again had the best times met back up in LA we had we've had some awesome funny Funny times times. Coachella here Coachella that was really fun that was like one of the funnest Coachella moments 2018 yeah Beyonce yeah was the headliner the weekend Eminem? It was a dope ass weekend. Yeah, she she's been through the journey of life we've, with me. We've had fun. When we've my had fun. my my priorities were, if I wasn't with my son, I had to figure out how to cope because I was so, I didn't realize how sad I was. So that's what I want to get into because I feel like I saw you, and that's always um, that's always a beautiful moment when you feel like someone can see you beyond the exterior, beyond who 
they think you are or who you portray yourself to be. And I felt like I felt you too. And that's why I was able to connect with you so much. But I always did know that like there was more that you weren't showing or being because for whatever reason. So get into that. Like what, why were you sad or why, why didn't you feel like you could be comfortable doing like being, being myself, your self, myself, your true self? Because I didn't know who I was. I feel like I've been in this industry since I was 12 years old. But before that, it was like, I like love in our family was different. Like, um, I, we might have, I might have not heard I love you enough. Like, my mom did it in like her actions because she was more of a single mom. My dad was an adventurer, so he was like gone for months at a time on an adventure. Mm -hmm. Dad, I love you. We have but it's daddies the truth. that take adventures, yes. Um, and then, um, so that caused her to like have just like a lot of stress. My, my, my brother and myself and my sister were holding it down at home mm -hmm. and we were really young. My sister has Down syndrome, so she's 11 years older than I am. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn how to take care of her wow. and it wasn't like vice versa. Wow, yeah. So it was like a very, the youngest? I was the youngest. So it's like a very like different. I am the youngest, mm -hmm. still the youngest, <laughs> with the most children. <laughs> You're welcome, Mom. Um, <laughs> so I just grew up in a very, and like with the Filipino culture, it's like, you're going to go to school, especially if you're a girl, like you're going to go to school, yeah. you're going to come straight back home, you're going to study, and you can only hang out with your cousins, and then you're going to become a nurse. <laughs> That or an accountant. Doctor, yeah, that's nurse, it. Lawyer. Doctor, nurse, what lawyer, whatever it is. Yeah, you better have a six-figure check in the end of it. That's it. Um, and I was the black sheep of the family, and I was like, "There's more to life." Like, and I was always trying to be away from the house because I was experiencing like my mom and my dad were constantly bickering at each other. There was physical abuse, like all of this stuff mental abuse like from my side and all of these things so I just kind of like checked out in an early age and was like how can I get away mm. like really be gone mm. so when modeling was brought to me in the sixth grade it was like some random girl like in you my class 12 years old I was 12 years old wow 12 uh, turning 13 years old and this girl was like hey you're weird looking and back then I'm like <laughs> I have somewhat of an ass right now and like sorry my language and some boobs but back then it was just like a ballerina straight pole yeah, like yeah alien yeah. no god there was no boys thinking that I was cute you know mm -hmm. and um she was like you're very cool looking you should try this out so I went to do you know John Robert Powers yes oh my god yes I okay. tried out for them in the oh, past yeah. too, yeah. So I went to John Robert Powers. And this and was in the Philippines or no, this was in, in Riverside, LA? Riverside, California. Okay, Riverside, okay. Um, but the thing was in Brea, so it was like farther. Um, I remember she, I took the bro brochure home to my mom and I was like, look, this is it. And she's like, oh, here you go again. There's something new. Because it was like dancing. It was like anything I could do to you get did. out of the house. Aww. So this one, I was like, oh, no, I'm totally good at this. I can act whenever. But it wasn't modeling for me. It was acting. Mm -hmm. So she was like, okay, well, the only, like after begging her a million times, she's like, the only way that I could take you there is if you take the etiquette classes because I was such a tomboy okay and she was like you at least you could learn to be like a woman you know poise and know how to use your forks and stuff and I was like okay okay great trade <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the etiquette class long story short I never took an etiquette class because after my first acting class there was a woman outside and she was like oh you know like you should do this. You should go be a part of the IMTA thing. Okay, so that was a competition that you joined at a learned young um, age, right? At like like after John Roberts Powers, you did a competition? I did it like t when I was 12, turning 13. Wow. Years old. Yeah. And then you won that competition? I won that competition, yeah. And Insane. I, and yeah. What was the prize for that competition? Um, I signed with, uh, like, with... They had like all the major agencies there, like back in the day, and yeah. they don't. I don't think they have this stuff like anymore. events like that now. Yeah, but it was like it was crazy because every every major agency had a booth, and my dream agency, 
and I got love for you, okay, still, but um, was IMG. And because every model that we knew and like I looked up to at yeah, least, like Giselle and all of it was signed with them. So of course, like the, my mom was like, you're too young to be going to New York mm-hmm. at this time. Mm. And I was like, why are you stomping on my dreams right now? I understand why she did it, but um, that caused me to stay local. So I signed with LA Models and my first job was Italian Vogue insane yeah like you go from just like a regular regular student and overnight like this like italian vogue y'all like vogue italia is not a small thing you got models still till this day busting their butts just to get you know a cover and here you are 13 years old yeah and i would have gotten the cover on that but they found out that i was 13 years old and the girls on the top on the cover were uh topless Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, okay. so I couldn't. Like, oh yeah, it would have been, been a part it of that. Been a problem. That okay. would have been a big problem. The fashion industry. Listen, we're not. We don't. Yeah. We bend rules, but that would have been taking it too yeah, far. Yeah. Yes. But okay. um, it was, it was an interesting. But then that, like, you know, I never learned how to deal with my emotions mm-hmm. because I was always told to be stronger. Mm-hmm. Like my mom's not the type of person that you see cry, mm-hmm. and if you did see her cry, like there had to be something super crazy or someone died for, for her, her to, to be like crying because she had to keep it strong. She felt always felt like she had to be strong, yeah. which I, uh, you appreciate, I appreciate for that sure. because she instilled that in me, but then I had to unlearn yeah. so much. That's but it's okay. But through my life, I had to like hold this exterior of, and I'm a cancer. Mm. So the exterior of Ooh. me is already, like I'm like the most loving person, Yeah. but I'm hard as shit, yeah. like in the outside yeah. like, for you to crack into me. And you've seen that evolution of life. Um, because cancers are very, like, open, wearing your heart on your sleeve, yeah. very emotional. And for you to, like, have to build a hard shell around you, mm-hmm. I can't imagine how that must have felt. I felt like to I To hide behind things. I, I felt like I, like, didn't belong. Like, I didn't know where I belonged mm-hmm. because I'd come back home after shooting and then everybody I know is still in high school and I just went to a club, like... Right. Mm, wow. The other day. Wow. So it's like I was toying with like my spirit being older right and then coming back down to a, an, a world where my boyfriend at the time you know mason's dad was in riverside and then i was like just going back and forth back and forth and like bouncing back and forth and not realizing that modeling is was a job mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. became a lifestyle mm. and so, that's where uh, it drowned me your job became your lifestyle yeah that makes so much, so much sense. And instead of like me learning um, to separate yourself, to separate myself, I didn't know how to do that because You're that's young. all I knew. Right, you were and young. No one's like guiding you yeah. through it. No one's telling you this is when it stops. This is when you have to now come home and focus on your homework. Now you know have this that and like. Did you have any other aspirations? N- at no, the time? because that, that's I was like, like that became your job. I mean, that became your aspiration. back then. Yeah, the the day rates yeah. were like. Man, like it was. What was it? So for like a half a day, I'd get like ten grand. That's amazing for for Target. That's just to work for like I take one day picture and then I'd walk away. (laughs) Man, (laughs) the way things have changed. changed. Yeah. So it's like, um, luckily, my agents at Elite are you guys are and Lips LA. You guys are amazing. Mm -hmm. Day rates are still great. Mm -hmm. I'm very appreciative of like the things that you guys do for us. but it definitely has changed. Uh, so and imagine you're young, I'm like making that much money 15, per day. 16, making this money coming back. Like, and I, a part of me felt like I never got to be a kid yeah, because yeah, I was yeah. racing to be an adult. Yeah. So I can, because I had so much resentment towards my family. Right. Because I felt like they didn't love me enough or whatever it was, but my, you know as you grow you realize like how far off you were yeah or I was we're young um and for so long like I lived like that like with that misery inside of like I'm not good enough for my mom Mm -hmm. 
because I, all I wanted was her approval. You wanted love a certain way. A certain way. And she only knew how to give love to you in her way. In her, yeah, you know? and she, in her own way. and through her evolution of life, like after separating from my dad, she learned to really love because the man that she's with now taught her that. Beautiful. I just had a conversation with her just recently about this. Beautiful. And she's told me like, I'm sorry, I haven't Aww. told you enough that, you know, like it comes back full circle. Yeah. And I, to yeah. me, like, I was a difficult child, man, like very crazy. And <laughs> sorry, <laughs> she mom. Said very crazy. Um, but in the end, it's, you know, going through life and all of those things. I, I was introduced to like party drugs at an early age, like ecstasy. And it was more and more so like, and it's casual. Yeah, but like, it, in this industry, will make it seem so casual. Yeah, but I've come to so many parties where yeah. I was like, and I was I've only seen that shit in movies. Yeah, and th that's the thing though. It was like 18 years old, but it came from more so like my the Riverside life. Yeah, and um, you know my my son's father introduced me to like raves and things like that. So that was like I was raves. a big raver. Oh man! Mm, she, like when Insomnia was back in San Bernardino, like back in the day, like. Dang. Yeah, so I like went and hung out at these raves and et cetera. Yes, I was the girl with like the lights on the fingers. Wow, I can imagine. Oh, like <laughs> totally. Um, um, and then, and so as you can see, like I suppressed my, like I started drinking at an early age, um, smoking weed, all that at a very early age. So it was just, you I was fast. consuming that into my body and suppressing like my feelings yeah. so whenever there would be like a sober moment it would be a blowout moment mm. like where i would just be angry and like you never got to deal it, with yourself deal. when you're like fully fully yeah. present and like really sober and you kind of just didn't want to yeah. didn't know how to sit in your sit feelings with that and then I, I was like in this phase in my life where it's like I can't keep coming back to Riverside. This is not my life. And then... Um, was Riverside, th did it become almost triggering at some point? Yeah, it's like every time I'd go back, I'm like, why you am I here? Come from, because I love the guy that was there. I always went back. But I'm like, why? Like, my body was ready to, like, just... My spirit was like, go. Like, why do you keep coming back here? Gotcha. But your mom was there. Your 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 life was there well, at my, that time, right? Yeah, my mom was more in LA. Oh, okay. I, we had a house in Riverside, so I I'd go see. back there. Okay, so you go back and forth. Like, cause I don't want to be over here with my mom, and you know, cause I'm gotcha. so used to having my life outside gotcha. of them. Like, yeah. well, I don't want to be babysat by my mom. Gotcha. Um, so a lot of it would be hanging out with my son's father. Okay. And then I I slowly realized like I was building resentment and I know now that I built resentment for being there when I wasn't working or when I was off work and then I got pregnant mm. how old were you when I was you got 20 pregnant? 20 and I was like I never really got to deal with one myself right first grow right have an adult life I felt like my adult my 20s were in my teens. Right. Interesting. Like everything was. Yeah, it was like 10 like steps ahead. 10 steps ahead. Of your 10 human years age. ahead of everything. So I was like 16, I was already in clubs. Right. I was already and doing these you things. You know, for women, we, we very much are forward thinkers. We very much mature just, just mentally faster. And uh, we're always like mentally. That's why I always say, like, women, when you're. 25 you're like 30 in your head a man that's 30 is really 15 oh yeah you feel me so i totally understand that and also being that being spiritual people like i can sense that you definitely i wasn't you've been spiritual here before, then. and you you weren't then but yeah. you you are now but you we are spirit yeah so just because it took you a while to find yourself in that realm doesn't mean that you weren't that you're yeah. always a spiritual yeah absolutely being. you always are I, a spirit I was always a spiritual being, of course. but you know, like they put you back and then they wipe your memory. Exactly. So you're like, you come here not knowing why the hell we're here. What are we supposed to do? What's my purpose? Why did you put me here? God with this family, yes. with these circumstances, mm -hmm. with this life, with these problems. Yes. And it's like, 
You're here to remember why you came back to learn whatever lessons that you were meant to learn this, this in this lifetime. lifetime. And exactly. so I feel like you're definitely you definitely were steps ahead of your um human body. human vessel. Yeah. I was like, come on, hurry up. Hurry like, up. But I'm now like, I'm like, hold on, hold on. Right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> your human vessel is still very young. Yeah, I'm still young. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hold on, hold on. So um, you're at you're you're 20 now. You got pregnant. I got pregnant, and then life. that was just like that put us halt because right before I got pregnant, VS was like, you know, asking me to come on castings and, and come in to Secret see back them. Then, honey, that was, that, the was the that was the pinnacle of the modeling. And I like, screwed VS. I screwed that up yeah. because I was drinking no. and I was like 18 years old. I was drinking and I was showing up to the them like with that. Again, I don't give a fuck attitude and puffy and all of that stuff. I wasn't taking it seriously because I didn't have the guides to tell me, like this hey, is an opportunity this they is don't an opportunity. want to do it like this, handle yeah. like that. But it's like, um, you know, the universe gave me um, a lot of opportunity. like opportunities, like new opportunities, Amen. and it's. It was up to me to decide what I was going to do with them. But I didn't know that back then. Right. So I had to take a halt, halting in fashion. And, like, you feel like, oh, man, like, what am I going to do? From 12 to 18, I didn't finish high school. I didn't do all of these things. Like, that's all I knew. Right, right. Like, to 20, you I... You were modeling. You were modeling, in that world. You, making money. Right. Stopped. Like, complete boom, nothing. I was like, oh, so my God. At, because at when I was pregnant, I was still shooting junior stuff. So I can't be, like, teen mom. Because mm, <laughs> I look like a baby baby right, back then. Right. So for You like, still look like a baby. Yeah. So I can't imagine. For you like, must have looked like a baby. baby, baby. <laughs> like, for, so for, like, nine months, I, that's it. I was out of the game. And I'm like, man, I didn't prepare for this moment. Mm. But I also didn't want to give up on my son's life just because it was going to make my life easier. Did you ever think, especially at that time, because, you know, you have brands like VS hitting you up and you have, I, I mean, went you're like at the like top. A, Did you have a... Well, at the time, I was like one of the only real, like Asian girls. Like mm -hmm. there was a few of us. Exactly. But, like I was like a go to people come to me. Exactly. So you were like at the top of your career yeah. when you kind of got pregnant. So yeah. like, did you think to keep it or not to keep I it? I heard at, the heartbeat and I was like, I'm not... Aww. Like when I you hear saw it? this, what was I saw, okay, so I felt, well, okay, talk about God right now, ready? I found out I was pregnant on Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. I remember this, mm -hmm. like yesterday. I found out I was pregnant on Easter Sunday, and I asked my girlfriend to come because I wanted to, I needed to go see my OBGYN, and I was here in LA at my mom's house, and I was like, you gotta come get me and take me to the OBGYN because I'm gonna be like able to drive with the mental that oh, I have and that that I remember telling my mom that Sunday I was pregnant she like the so disappointment in her face mm -hmm. because she, you know she she told me she vocalized it she's like out of all my children I thought you would be the last one because I was oh. so mature like mm -hmm. you know yeah. so strong-willed and yeah. mature and like she thought that I just like, had she my didn't shit. have to worry, about, worry about that so, of course, I was like, that's not really what I want to hear from you right now. Um, just fucking say you love me. Right, of course, <laughs> of course. I'm like, so I went to the doctors with my, my girlfriend, and um, Satsi, you're a real one. And she, she heard it with me, and I heard the heartbeat, and it just became a reality to me. What, what, what stage was this? Like, I, you had just found out? I just, the next day I went, on Monday. Like, oh, okay, and there was already your heartbeat? There, yeah, because oh there's there's a, there's a heartbeat as soon as the baby's there. Really? Yeah. See, I, I'm just learning this. I, so I'm just really actually trying to understand. What? I did not know that. Yeah. Did you find out late? Like at one month? Or no, something? I was two, two and a half months. So they were oh, okay. already. So, yeah. Okay. And okay. the thing is, I was, I'm like I'm irregular with my period. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, two I never know. Okay. And I was like abs like you know, right 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 my appetite was like great you just ate a burrito. but the the situation that made me realize I might be yeah. is I was in the car and I felt sick all of a sudden I'm like the type of person that could be like on roller coasters right. and everything Anything. I was like why do I feel sick my mom made a joke she's like haha what if you're pregnant I looked at her I was like <gasps> 
So oh. I went and got a test and I did all that. Anyways, gotcha. Okay. Next day I went and I heard his heartbeat and I automatically knew he was going to be a boy. Hey, wow. Yeah. Look at you. You were so in tune even then. I was like, I can't. I can't mm, yeah. do that. So I, I sat with it in myself, but nothing ever told me, go get an abortion, okay. go do this. Like, yeah. you know, like it's just inside of me. It was like, there's a reason why just this child came have- into your life and it came into my life at such a sad period mm-hmm. of my life. Like, you know, when everyone sees me, they're like, oh, she's like partying and having fun. She's having the best time of her life. But no one saw me. Mm-hmm and the sadness that was inside of me and what I was doing to myself. So I was like, someone to finally love me unconditionally, oh, you yeah, know? Like, yeah. he's gonna love me for me for forever. You. Yeah. Um, so that, that sent me through like a roller coaster of emotions because I was forfeiting like my Almost like you thought you felt like you career. would have to career, forfeit your career. Yeah, yeah. I did. You did? Um, so how, how long? For a while. Because I, I went from doing like the bigger campaigns in New York and everything to being more local and only going to jobs that I could fly in and out of. Gotcha. So like I, I did Kohl's and Target and Macy's, which is great. I'm very grateful for them. In um, LA? Yeah. Uh, well... Or back and forth. Back like and forth. Go, like I'd go okay. red eye, come back. Gotcha. Go red eye, come back. And your mom was helping you? Uh, my grandmother was, because my mom was still working at the okay. time. So, like, imagine I went from, like, this lavishly crazy, right. lavish life to, boom, straight being into a parent and right. still, like, being dug into the back of me, like, why don't you go to school and become a nurse? And da 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 blah, blah, blah. I felt like I wasn't ever was enough. Was anybody pressuring you to do that? Or my, just yeah, your mom. mom? Well, my mom was like, she was trying to foresee the future. Of course. You know, she's being a mom. Of course. So she's like, How are you going to sustain isn't... yourself? Yeah. yeah. Like, what if one day you, you something model, happens right. to your, your face. what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, I'm like, but of course me, I'm like, I'm good. God's got me. Like, at the time, I wasn't even saying God. Like, I was like, I'm feel? good. Mm-hmm. I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'm good. Everything was, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, but I was not good. And but did you feel I, it inside that you were going to be good eventually? Like, you'd be good? I was hoping. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I was just going with the flow of life. At that point, I was like a child raising a child. Right, right. I didn't know what I was doing. Right. I was going through the motions of everything. And he taught me to grow. Mm. And, you know, I, I, I put my son through traumatic times and we've been through life together. So we're both still together. growing yeah. together. Um, I feel like life, you're in a life school. You never stop growing every day. Like you're going through that journey. And then there was a period in time where I couldn't be with, like right after I had my son, there were moments where his dad was still young, you know, his dad's young. And, um, just did very immature things that made me realize like you're really not the person for me Mm -hmm. and I'm just enabling you because I was the breadwinner and he was staying home and I was like trying to you know with our culture it's like oh you need to be married to the person you were trying to have that family I asked him to marry me because I was like the man in the relationship wow I bought the ring I did everything yeah like wow and how old were you when you did that 20 Okay, okay, so you yeah. had the baby, you're like, you need to marry me. Yeah, I'm you're like, saying, yeah, because I, you know, because my culture, I yeah. was like, I yeah. didn't freaking know. I get it. So I went through this whole thing with him, and then I realized that I couldn't be with him anymore. Mm-hmm. I was like, I can't Thank God. Thank be God. with you. And there was just a lot of, it was just a very toxic relationship. Yeah. And um, what happened was, there was a lot of pain and resentment on his side and both my side, and that was being taken out on like Mason. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like we could be good co-parents right. because I just wanted my son to be with me and he wasn't okay with Mason traveling with me mm-hmm. or going, because it was still like inside of him. He's like, I want you. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just it was really hard. And we finally now, nine years later, are very great co-parents together. Um, Mason now lives with me full time and sees his dad whenever his dad just had a baby too. So Mason now has two sisters. Awesome. And he's a big um, brother. He's a big brother. Awesome. But I had to go through a journey, and I feel like a lot of my sadness after 
that moment, like when I had him, was the fact that all I wanted to do was be a mom. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't be a mom because there were barriers there that were stopping me. And instead of me like immersing myself in my career and being focused on like my child, I resulted to drinking and partying and hanging out with people who just didn't appreciate me Mm. and dated guys who really didn't appreciate me. Um, so that, that alone, like will suck you dry. And that took my career into like a whole spiral because I had moments where I was like, well, let me just try again. I think Mason was three, four years old. Mm-hmm. I, was, I asked his dad, I was like, can you watch him? I'm going to go back to go New back York and I'm going to try it again. Okay. Okay. Like not like just time. like, I'm going to try it again. So I went to New York and I signed with like, I saw all the agencies and I remember at the time like there was the agents here were like you know like I don't know you're trying to go back into that world again and I think because they were making so much money off of me like commercially oh I see yeah they're like uh sure, you sure you want to go back there I don't think you're going to be able to you don't really have that look anymore you know mm-hmm. and I ended up signing with DNA okay. and DNA is like DNA is DNA mm-hmm. they make stars um Naomi's with them mm-hmm. you know so I, I remember that, I was nervous, but it was like the most unhealthiest time of my life because I felt like I had to be a, in a, like a certain picture. Yeah. I was a size 23 pant, mm, like wow. 23, wow. crazy. Yeah, that's really small. Yeah, I'm just like an extra, extra small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like wow. a size 23 pant and I was like smoking cigarettes, like. Cigarettes Did you and feel coffee. pressure to like stay thin? I felt and, like I needed to be like that look. who they had. Okay. You know, I had to okay. be Go like to that girl. That girl. Okay. Like I had to be like a certain person. And it's not because DNA told me to be. Right. It's because I was insecure with who I was. And I felt like that's who I was at the time. Um, I went through phases in my life. Um, and it brought out a very masculine, hard energy in me. Mm-hmm. Because when I'm away from my son, I'm no lo- I was no longer mother. Oh. So femini- femininity yeah. is gone. Loyalty was gone. Right. You were in a relationship with me at the time. Sorry, guys. There was none. I was not loyal to you right. because in my mind, you were not loyal to me. Right. You know, mm-hmm. because I didn't see loyalty in the relationship that I was when, like, growing up with my mom and my dad, myself. It kind of informed your perspective of, of what, what you men, thought all relationships and all men would be all my like. exes cheated on me at that ah, time okay so that was also it for was me also <laughs> your not a great thing right um and then i was like man i became a dude you well you know i was like a dude i was like well if they can do it i can do it i didn't even like i, I got to a point where you know i'd call you be like hey i'm, I'm I, let's go to the club mm-hmm. You're like, whose table is this? Mm-hmm. Mine. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I love it. I'm like, had two bodyguards there. Yeah. No one could talk to the girls that I was with yeah. because those are, I felt like a madame, but I wasn't because I wasn't pimping <laughs> no one out. And <laughs> but I love it. I love a boss ass woman who can embrace her masculine energy and just like mm, be that person. Because I also have very much been that mass. I've had to take on a lot of masculine energy to take care of myself my whole life. Cause I also, I didn't grow up with my parents for a large majority of my life. And um, I basically had to raise myself. Yeah, and that's the hardest A lot thing. of that has, it builds you up with that masculine energy where you're not able to really dive into your femininity and softness and like, you know. You gotta learn really, to fall. You got yeah. And so like, I totally identify with that. And it made me very much a tomboy. Like I have like uh, one of my, What's it called? Portraits, you know, class pictures where I look like a boy. Yeah. I had straight backs and I was wearing some t-shirt. Like I look straight up like a boy. I love it. And which I is so like, opposite of who she is now. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like I still she, very am very like masculine but you're, energy. You you're, but I've you're learned letting to balance. that like yeah. femininity come out. I'm like it you're come the out. goddess inside of yourself. Amen. I'm yes. letting it come out and I've learned the beauty of the feminine energy and the divine feminine and in the past two three years i feel like i've really dove into that like world because a lot of that also is from you know seeing how my mom was always relying on my father Mm -hmm. you know she gave up her life for my father and so she was just the mom 
And so I don't mine know, was the opposite. You know what I'm saying? And and I don't know why at the time I looked to that and thought maybe that was weak. I thought I'm never gonna be asking my no man for permission to do this or permission to do that. But I have to understand that she's coming from a different culture. She's coming from a different culture and a different time. You know what I mean? It wasn't what it, things weren't the same way they are now. Absolutely. You feel me? But I looked at and I thought, mm, that's a weakness. I don't want to be like my mom. Mm-hmm. I need to be like a man and I'm always going to have my own. And I'm never going to ask a man for nothing. So I get that 100%. Yeah. But it's so beautiful that like and interesting for you how the you flip. had to build, yeah, but you there had to build flip. this masculine energy and be tough and so that no one can mess with you because you've been so hurt. Well, but I learned it from mother. my, my mom was like that. You see? Because she, you, her, her life. Yeah, like her she life. was, she was like, you don't need a man for nothing. Mm. You know, she was like, go get your, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. she's like, with what you're making, you should right. be like having how many houses right, right now? Right, right. She, but of course, my money was going to like partying right. and this and like right. freaking thousands of dollars of bags that mm. I did not freaking need and mm. all of this stuff. Sorry. So, future models of the world, save save your money. Your money. Save your money. Don't throw it uh, away on all them designer things. Yeah. So I just Ooh. I was I felt like I had to fit into the stigma and I that was like in my mid twenties, mm. and again like this is like the beauty of God and the universe and like your angels and everything. It's like when you believe in yourself and you get yourself into that mindset, no matter what minds, like what, no matter where you are in your life, if you have that belief in yourself, they'll push you. Yes. They're like, you got this because yes. you're going to find your way. Eventually but, you will find your way. So that was my second opening, right? So like I did that all of a sudden Everything was going good again. I got a 12-page spread in Vogue, American Vogue. Amazing. September issue. Huge. The best issue. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. That's a, for, for those who are in the fashion industry, September is like the super coveted because I think, what is it? We're back from summer where nothing happens and it's like before fashion week. I remember Kendall Jenner was on the cover of that what issue. What year was that? Um, 2016, I believe. Okay, okay. Amazing. Something like that. And um, when I opened to it, I had 12 pages wow. or something like that. I was like, wow. damn, this is crazy. That's huge. So, of course, the ego came into play. I started booking like, like, I'm back. like, like, like I'm back, bitch. I'm back, bitches. Um, and then the ego came to play, and I was booking like all these amazing jobs, like with Lily Pulitzer, you know, she only does all the VS girls yeah. and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I was booking all of these beautiful jobs. My ego came back. I started partying again. Okay. My child wasn't with me. Mm. I'm angry. Mm. All of that, my career started to fall. Because mm. then my focus was, I need to grow my social media and hang out with these types of people mm. because they're all doing it. Right and their careers are amazing, that's where I want to be. Instead of, but I never felt like I fit in because I always felt different from them. And I didn't feel like they were loyal to each other because I was seeing what was going on in the back end. Behind the scenes. Because I'm friends with so many different circles. You know, and you saw, like I took you, we we all hung out with different circles. So it's like, I'm like, y'all do this to each other? Like, and that's one thing, like, Seeing how people really live and how people really are behind the scenes, behind very the mirrors. Very insecure people. Very insecure people. Like Instagram, it really is a it's highlight a, reel. It, it really not, is a highlight reel. Like what you see on Instagram is really not what at all. At all. Like people followed me and I, I lost like within this, just this two years, I lost like 30,000 following mm-hmm. because of the fact that I wasn't partying anymore. Wow. And I wasn't showing like this lavish this lifestyle. Lavish lifestyle. With my these lifestyle's cool different. Friends. My yeah, like so. Right. I still have those friends. Those right. friends hit me up all the time, but I don't need don't to need be the, showing exactly. them. Exactly. Like but for a long time, it felt. It feel especially like I feel like. like I mean, Instagram has always been popping. You don't like, know someone unless you have a picture with them on your exactly. Instagram. Exactly. Like I don't to, need that in my life thank now. Thank you. You have to show it off. Like. I'm cool. Like, I don't need that in my life. I'm in a different place time. in my life right now. It took a to lot of time. To understand that. But I, I remember uh, remember when Donna Karen, I did the... Yeah. the so, Donna Karen's a good friend of mine, and um, this was back in 2017. Yeah. She threw a beautiful... Um, 
luncheon for me and my guests, like the people that I invited. I invited you, Seven, everybody, like at that time, like Ryan was there, Ryan Destiny, everyone. That was that was fun. That was fun. That was a fun was really time. Fun. Again, I was drunk. I was because I didn't know how to be around people. Wow, without without feeling like you you have to be this fun version of yourself. Yes, and that fun version of and yourself I was always, needed that alcohol. Yeah, yeah, like I was like anxious yeah. and anxiety because I was not woke. I felt yeah. like I needed to be a certain right right way. And I feel that. And I remember sitting there, and I have the video of it where like Donna was saying all these beautiful things about me, and I. Like, people were looking at me like, yeah, like, she totally is like that. But then I was thinking to myself, who is this woman talking about? Oh, Because I didn't see that in myself. I didn't see that, yeah. Um, And at that time, there was a guy there that, you know, we, um, spirit no longer lets me speak to the person. But he introduced me to my spiritual family. Mm -hmm. And one of my best friends now is a shaman. His name is Prana. Beautiful. And um, he gave me my first reading wow. in February, I think of 2017 or, 18, or 2018, 2018. Uh, yeah. and he, that was, that was like the beginning crazy. of the journey of seeing yourself. But before we get there, I was just like, yeah, that was some crazy times. Oh yeah. Cause you went, Oh, I dated, oh my God. I, was, I was there. And then I feel like that's where after that, I remember us having... Well, oh. when you, when I met you, yeah. I, I had been dating this guy. Um, I don't want to blast his name out. You know? <laughs> but I, I was dating this guy, and he is an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. He's an athlete. Yeah. Leave it there. And um, I was really heartbroken, remember, at that yeah. time? Yeah. And that, that like, because I was... I never felt love like that. I really fell in love with him. Yeah. It was a good situation for the time that it was. Yeah. Like, we were both there to help heal each other. And I remember I had fucked that up because I had people in the background around me that was like, you need to do, like, paparazzi stuff with him. Mm. You need to do this stuff. Mm. And I fucked up and I, like, allowed that shit to happen. Got into too much of that world. And then that relationship was gone. And I was like, because I didn't believe that he could love me just for you because I didn't know who I was mm-hmm. I'm like why would this guy date me when he's just dated all these celebrities all these I didn't see it yeah. in myself mm-hmm. and that was like the sad part and then I that relationship broke mm-hmm. and then the, after that that was where I spiraled yeah, remember because that yeah. 2017 going into 2018 it was just a that weird was like, phase whoa. of figuring shit out and like spiraling quick, down. Spiraling down, going crazy, doing all of this shit. And like, I remember we went out one time, and I think this is the one time I was like, I, 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 I prayed for you. Because I was like, you're going through it. I, we were going, we went out, we ended up at some strip club, I think. And then we left. But, but like, um, the people that we were around, like, these are celebrities, all these different people. But, like, I could just tell you were... You cared about these people, or at least you cared about some of them. But I could tell that some of, they, they didn't return that same love back. It wasn't the same, and I, I just, my heart broke inside, because I'm like, I'm here with you. So I'm just like, all right, that's my girl, so I'm just, hey, I'm, I'm enjoying myself, but y'all, I could see y'all too, and y'all not it. Like, y'all, y'all look like you're so-and-so on Instagram, and we're not gonna say no names, but like, so many people, I just be like, ew. You're nasty. Because the way you treat people, the way you move, it's just nasty. And I just remember feeling like, this ain't it for me. This ain't it. This ain't it. But obviously there are some amazing, genuine people who are in the limelight. And that's that doesn't mean anything. But it's just like there are some people who are really in that lifestyle. Use who use you. Who just want you for what you can do for them. And I've seen it so much that I'm just like... Y'all nasty. Y'all really will get together just to take photos. As soon as like paparazzi comes, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let's. And I'm just like, wow. This is what's happening behind the scenes, guys. Like, people will call paparazzi <clears throat> just to come. And I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with that either. Nothing's wrong with and that. And I was always the type of person that looked like 
reckless because I didn't care. Like, I didn't care to put makeup on like that. I didn't care. There was at one point that I was, I didn't leave the house without a mask on. That was like before masks. Right, right. Before the mask that was, was the a mask, different the makeup, makeup mask. mask. It's like, like, I gotta present myself to yeah. be this perfect person. And then I just so g- got into pictures. this, like, I don't give a attitude Attitude. like paparazzi takes photos like i had a bottle in 1942 in my hand while all the other girls are like this i'm like hey (laughs) this is me fuck (laughs) y'all what um that was back then um but i i went fast forward and then i i this guy was like you you have a power inside of yourself and you don't realize it or see it and I want to introduce you to somebody. So that's when I was introduced to prana. I was always skeptical because I've always been told that that's like voodoo stuff that you don't right. do. Don't did you do grow that up stuff. I grew up Catholic. Okay. So, so even did I. more so. Like and I always had a, the 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 being able to see the other side because yeah. when I was a kid, when I was a little baby, mm-hmm. my mom said there was this instance that this instant that happened where um my uncle had passed away. Mm-hmm. And in our culture, we have a viewing for seven days. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, mm-hmm. but we had to, yes, yeah. Almost. So we had like view the body for yeah. seven days, yeah. pray over the body like before they descend. Mm-hmm. And um, my mom was just really tired and the place was so far away. Like after work, she's like, you know, God, don't, don't take this against me. I'm just tired and I want, you know, I gotta go to work tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I, she said I was a year and a half, and she said I straight up w- got up, walked to the door, and put my hands up and told him to pick me up, like the guy who had passed away. Wow. Like I was like, Uncle Rudy, Uncle wow. Rudy. And she, she said she never moved so chills. fast. She grabbed all of us, put us in the car, and went. Wait, where'd she go? To the viewing. Oh. Because she was like, oh, hell no, we're not doing all this stuff. Right, he's not going to linger she, around. No, 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 so Sharina wanted to see me yeah so she that happened and then there was many other incidents where I could see like people who had passed away and they're like presenting themselves to me is that called clairvoyant um, when you can see or communicate that's when you can communicate you can communicate okay it's like uh like a medium you can communicate with them but um I think everyone has that yeah but you have to be but we were always told that that doesn't exist yeah so you um, have to tap into it uh when I Fast forward in time, like I'm skeptical because that's not how I grew up, that all of that stuff. But something always told me like to try it. Like, you know, you at that point, um, I felt like I had no other choice because I was already at rock bottom and I had been like consuming alcohol every day and happy things and etc. So um I was like what do I have to lose? Mm-hmm. And he told me things that you could only know if you were me. Wow. And then he told me, if you get out of this, you know, like if you don't, because you opened this door already, mm-hmm. you're going to end up like your dad and your dad's mom, mm-hmm. which, which like so- my dad had two strokes. So he's par- paralyzed on his left side. Wow. And like because of the stress and everything yeah. that I was putting in my and it was like a bloodline. It would go to me. Oh god. So he's forbid. like, you that you will end You've up been like that. Open to, to what you, like the, you just have the cheat code to life right now. Wow. Chills. Like, yeah. So he's like, you either change your life now because you just opened this door, or thank God you did. That's what's gonna happen. And it's I could have been like, yeah, fuck the like yeah, this is real. real. But of course inside of me I was like. You knew it was true. I knew it was true. So that day I became a vegan. Wow. I stopped smoking cigarettes. Wow. I stopped drinking wow. and stopped doing drugs. Wow. All in one day. Do you know what happens to you when that happens? <laughs> Stop smoking cigarettes too. Withdrawals oh, he like gave, a mother. Yes, he's like three days, wow. see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I remember my, um, my friend Noah was opening up a... Uh, uh, the the Greek restaurant on um, Beverly, mm-hmm. like or or sorry in Rodeo off Rodeo in Rodeo, and I was like, okay, I'll come. That was the third day, mm-hmm. and I had just been hanging out with those people the day before my reading. Okay. When I got there, everyone looked like they had this gray haze wow. around them, like I was seeing like 
their, their aura. aura was all gray. Ooh. And they, like, right away when I got there, they were, like, trying to give me stuff. Of course, and of course. I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. Right. And they were like, we'll see how long that lasts. Mm. It's kind of cute. It's like, oh, hmm, look, she's, okay. It's, and it's cute. And I remember the anxiety I had. I had to sit in the bathroom of that restaurant, and I called Prana and my friend um, Dan, and they had to me go through a breathing exercise wow. just so I could be around those people. And so your anxiety was skyrocketing. Skyrocketing, like. So your body was telling you, your spirit was telling you, you don't need to be around these people anymore. You don't need or to this be, energy. You don't anymore. need to be around it right now. Wow. So, but I still fought it because right. that's all I knew. Right. Like these are my friends. Yeah. I can still be this new person and still have these yeah. friends. And then but I sometimes would, you do have to separate yourself. And then I would go, and then these people would be like. Yeah, I'm super spiritual too. And I was right. like, am I crazy? Like, let me dabble back into... So I was going back, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then um, then the whole thing happened with VS again. So that in 2018, VS asked me... another opportunity to for Victoria's Secret. For Victoria's Secret. And I went and I was still insecure. I was still like learning to be the goddess inside of myself, even though I was on the journey yeah, already. You, were, you started the, the started journey. this spiritual journey, but I wasn't manifesting right because I was like not secure with myself mm-hmm. and not secure with like the decisions I was making, yeah. and still trying to be a part of a group that mm-hmm. didn't care for you. Didn't care for me yeah. like that. Like because now. I'm not bringing girls around and all these things. Like you're no longer useful. I'm not no longer How you useful. Were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crazy. Um, I still got love for y'all though. Um, what do you call it? the? But then the whole journey happened where I ended up saying, "But who am I really?" And I know I'm Filipino. I know I'm all these things, but I don't know my culture. Is so I hit up the Philippines. I was like, I want to come out there. I love that. And I remember I want to do some trip. activism work. Yeah. And that trip changed my life. Oh, I bet. After I saw, like, I was sober. Mm-hmm. After I saw like, everything that I've seen there, yeah. I also went through a healing experience there. Yeah. And I came back a whole other person. After that, I didn't need to go to like anymore of the bullshit mm. bullshit and i i ended up what getting was the pregnant healing experience um i saw a, a tribe there called the Matigsilog tribe okay. and they are on the farthest point of davao mm-hmm. and like all the way up in the mountains so it, like we had to take it's crazy what they could do on a dirt bike wow. like how many people you could yeah. fit on a dirt bike what? i'm sure it's the same yeah, yeah, where I've you're from oh, where yeah. there's like 10 people on oh, a dirt yeah, bike i've seen it <laughs> And I remember going up there and I'm like, I'm, how are y'all? I'm, yeah, like one of my spirit animals is a hawk. So whenever I'm doing the right thing, wherever I'm going is the right thing, there'll be like a hawk. Look how everything's clearing up now. Um, there will always be a hawk. So I remember that there was this hawk that was just following us. I was wow. like, oh, there's about to be some shit that happened. Right. But I thought I was going there to help them, that's like bring help. awareness to them. They threw this like kind of like gathering. They all started singing and doing their chanting and all that stuff. And I felt like I all these people I had like let enter my body and like, you know, like the energies that I was around. All of them were like I was chanting and singing with them. And then all of a sudden I was just sitting down. I was like, why am I doing this to myself right now? And all of those memories kept floating and floating and floating and floating and I was like why is like I've been able to bury that right like why is that coming out right I opened my eyes and I knew what they were doing I'm like you guys are I'm not here to help you you're here to help me so I went through the process of the healing part and this is just chanting they're just like their energy and tapped into my spirit and they're children they're not even adults the children were doing it that is so beautiful when you're able to like really connect with your culture when you're not influenced with social media internet you know the dark web Mm -hmm. because that's what it is it's a web it sucks you in and dark energies you're pure spirit and these children Mm -hmm. channeled things in me when I was able to release. I saw things. I knew what they were. 
I opened my eyes and there was a girl that was knocked out on the floor. And the other ones were like, two were like fighting demons with their eyes closed. Another one was like, I was, when I'm telling you. This, was this at nighttime? Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. This is intense. I was like, what the? F it's like they literally took everything out, out of, of you and they were battling it for you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I literally have chills yeah. right now. I'm and, but when I had opened my eyes, wow. I felt an angel like above me and coming into my body. And I felt like my wings were growing from like that, like there was wings in my back. I was like, and it hurt. You know, like the pain was there. I was like, and I kept just flapping them. Oh my God. And I could see that, wow. like I could see it. And I was, and, but I didn't say nothing because I was wow. like, what's going on? Yeah, this is yeah, so this trippy. Is so I've never like, experienced what? nothing like it, this it's before. Not like you took any I didn't ayahuasca, take ayahuasca, nothing. nothing. This is just people's wow. energies. Like they're like, tap, 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 tap. Yeah. And these girls came, one by one, came up to me. Well, the first one was like, I saw you in your mother's room. You're not an accident. I always felt like I was an accident. And I was like, what the fuck? Wow. I was like, that alone. I was like, oh my gosh. You're going to cry, girl. The next one was like, the people that you're hanging around with, they don't love you. Mm. And I saw them. I saw the who they all are, you know? And I was like, wow. wow. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, uh, and then... The other one came to me and was like, I saw the demon that was living in you and I fought them, mm. right? And um, I saw that too. Mm. And then the last one was like, I saw an angel come into you. Amen. And I was like, wow, this world is so real. So, um, so that trip changed my life completely. And when I came back, I was just a different person. And I remember um, my my partner now, my life partner now, came to uh, the Philippines to visit me on that trip. And he was going through his journey. Okay. So he's like, what shit did what you, happened? what happened? Did you go through and all of that shit? Like, this is crazy. Cause he knows me through the seven years of craziness that I've been. So you guys had always been in contact with each other, yeah. friends, but. Yeah, we were together at one point and then I, we had two ectopic pregnancies. Okay. So I always felt like him and I weren't meant to be together. But then he took, he went out of his way to go all the way to the Philippines. I was like, you love me. You went from New York to the Philippines. Like, you, you love me. So, of course, we re reunited and I ended up getting pregnant on that trip. And I never thought I could get pregnant because I was having ectopic pregnancies. And I thought... And you guys weren't trying when it no. happened with those no. two times? No, okay. I just, no, it's just... So then you thought, oh, it's not for We could never, okay. I was like, this can't happen. We are not meant to be. Mm -hmm. But after he left that trip, I went into the ocean. I remember this, mm -hmm. like it was yesterday. I was in Barakai and I was looking and there's no jellyfish at all because the jellyfish go farther into the deeper ocean, a part of the ocean. And there was just a jellyfish circling around me. I was, like while I was meditating first, I was like, wow. and praying, I was like, thank you God for this experience that I'm, you know, experiencing, like this is such a blessing and you know, all of these things. Whatever you want to tell me, give me a sign. And I opened my eyes and it was a jellyfish. I was like, what, what kind of a sign is that? Right. So I went back, I like rushed back and I Googled it, like the spirit, you know, the Google. Jellyfish. Je what does jellyfish spirit mean? And it literally told me I like I was either gonna be expect like I was expecting to have a baby. Whoa. And I remember writing Russ, I was like, I'm pregnant. He's like, I just left there. <laughs> girl. You're tripping. I just I was, left. Sure enough, I was and I knew it was gonna be a girl. Wow. And she came to me in my dream wow. and she told me what I should name her. All of that. Like, she was already a soul that was like, I'm, I'm, ready. I'm, I'm coming into your life now because you're ready now. She's been trying to come into my life. But she, my body, I wasn't ready for her. I had to be ready for her because she, when you meet Lila, like, Mason and Lila, like, they plan this in, a, in another world. Because they're best friends. And they, they're the only people that could be the way that they are with each other. But Lila's like an old soul. Wow. She will tell you, like, she's a Cancer Leo cusp, yeah. so she's like your dog yeah. and me in one person. Oh! Yeah. Feisty, Feisty but, but loving and, and loving and hard. I wanted to ask you, like, how is Like, Lila? I'll touch her, and she's like, 
or I'll touch her and she's be. You don't know what you'll get. Yeah, oh yeah, she I was. She's that. like pizza. I'm like, that's one of her first words. I'm like, pizza? not mom, mom. No, no, no she didn't pizza. say mom. I, I was naming it. I was naming it. Yeah, <laughs> like she's a whole so beautiful. other beautiful so beautiful. spirit and. Yeah. Like, she resonates a lot with crystals, too, though, because she's like a crystal baby. Mm -hmm. And she wears, like, a chakra. So if I take that off of her, oh, my gosh. It's a whole game over. I love when, like, babies, because I think a lot of people think, like, babies don't have, like, no, they have autonomy. They like, know. they know what they want. They're, the, their souls in the purest People form. say, like, oh, she doesn't understand what you're saying. She does. She understands. She's she one years old, yeah. one right now. And I'm like, Lila, can you throw this away? Mm -hmm. She'll go walk her diaper by herself yeah. and throw it away. Because, listen, children, babies, they understand. We just have to explain things on their level mm -hmm. we just have to like we might have to so-called dumb it down but don't make things up there's one book that i was reading that like also kind of changed my life and perspective about things um the celestine prophecy okay i've never read that you must if you haven't because you're you totally you'll love it it's about um I, I'm not going to do it justice. You guys just have to read it. But it's just about this who man about? who, uh, James Redfield. James it Redfield. It was super popular in the in 90s. Notes. Yes. And like, it was a super New York Times bestseller. I think the way the author wrote it, he wrote it in a way so that people who think spirituality is a new age thing it's would not, be able to like, it's not. People, they would be able to like stomach the truth better. Because I feel like he literally put universal secrets and truths yeah. in a book, but in a way that's like an adventure story that like... People understand. That, un that you'll, you'll understand it. But if you know the truth... It's like you spirituality for dummies. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> you but, know that book that they're yeah. like, they're like uh, Spanish for dummies. Exactly. But like even more so, it's more so like when you know the truth, you know that he's saying the, like, the truth. Yeah. But if you don't know it or don't believe in it, yeah. you're just like, oh, this is a cool story. Yeah. It was uplifting. It was, wow. but like it talks about children and how like don't lie to children don't make things up that's all for us and our ego to make us feel like oh we're more superior they sometimes are here to teach us, us they're totally they're older are. than us sometimes oh yeah the spirit that lives in them is here to fulfill their own purpose yeah. they're just in a young vessel right now but you have to respect her give her uh, the same dignity as you would in an adult yeah. just when it comes to communication, obviously they're younger, so they don't have as wide of a vocabulary, but that's when you just have to go on their level to communicate. But they're very much here, they're not dumb. And that's why when you act out in front of children, when you're doing all these crazy things, you know in your own childhood what you've seen Look, your parents do. I can't even make this up. You see that hawk wow, right there? Wow, guys, there's an actual hawk outside of our window that just flew I by I can't even make that up. Your spirit animal showed up because we're doing what the we're supposed, supposed to, be to be doing. We're in the right place at the right time. And we're bringing in the right energy. But yeah, it's just like... It's trippy. That's, that's amazing, guys. Like, literally, a hawk is actually right outside the window, kind of circling. That's very trippy. <laughs> <laughs> we're here for a reason, guys. This is so beautiful. But yeah, it's just... Spirit world is very much here. We are spirits living in these physical, fleshy bodies. But we're not above anything in or, nature or more than anything we're not more than anything we're not smarter than these animals we're not i literally than was nature. almost crying because driving here i saw all this trash on the the highway mm -hmm. and i just was like i'm so sorry mother earth oh, that we're yeah. doing this to you we've done this to you like i'm just doing my best to try to be the best for my part but um, going back to like what you were saying about the, the children thing, I see the difference in my son and my daughter because I'm more aware with her yeah. now yeah. versus the traumas that I've inflicted in my son. Mm -hmm. And like, a, like, but again, he's here to teach me. Yeah. So Those I can't be upset. I can't be like hard on myself because we were meant to go through that or else we would never have gone through that together. Exactly. He chose that he path chose for himself that too. He chose that path for himself too. But it's like he has to learn because whatever he did in his past, get this, mm -hmm. his life path number and my, my partner's life path number and their karmic debt numbers are the same. Wow. Look at that. They're like f from the same clan. Soul family. Soul family. Yeah. And they're very alike. Wow. So when they when they love each other, yeah. they love each other. Yeah. When they're like 
we're jealous fussing. or fussing. Oh my God. I'm like, and I'm the person that is so funny. that's sitting there like, <laughs> has to deal with it because I'm right. like, you guys are the same person, but we're all the same person because yeah. we're all alike. We're yeah. all there. That's we're cool. all learning. But Lila, when, if I raise my voice, Oh man, she'll tell me. She's like, um, she's like, ah! to, who are you talking to, man? She, no, but she'll like, she'll, she'll, she'll grab my face. Uh, like she's, she's like, like, Mom, like if I better be quiet, because I, I have the, I have a spirit that I that goes in. I don't know if you guys uh, do this in um, your in culture, culture, in the Guinean culture. Do, do you guys know the the goddess Oya? Uh, I don't know if she's called Oya in my culture, but. I'm sure yeah. there is some celebrities. She's like the goddess of the wind and okay. change yeah. and rain. Mm-hmm. And, like, she brings in, like, storms and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But she brings in life, okay. change, change. So she, I believe that all of us have different goddesses and gods that live within us sure. and that reincarnate with us. So she definitely, like, comes out of me Ooh. multiple times. She's like the... The fire in me. And when, like, for me, my happy place is if everyone around can just be loving, speak loving, be kind, be loving in every which way. If you cannot be that way around me, I take, I, I'm doing my best to change that now, but I take it personal because I'm like, why are you messing with my aura like this? Like, I love. Yeah. Don't make me not love. Right. Like, you know. So if somebody's coming to you with like opposition or like negativity. Yeah, I'm like, take it like, Ugh. like, Ugh. like, and yeah. then I'm like, I can't. I feel the same way. I can't. I get very like. I can't. I, it hurts me to the core when someone is rude to me, and I'm just like. Or if I see me. them, if or if I see like, you know, if if I know that they're aware of a journey that mm-hmm. they're on, and then they like relapse, mm-hmm. and I'm like, look, mm-hmm. that to me even more so is like, Ugh, like fire. frustrating. But Lila will like literally. She is like my homegirl. Mm-hmm. I don't know what we were in a past life. I'm gonna figure that out. But she, she has That's no karmic debt. Wow. No karmic debt. That means that she came willingly, volunteeringly back she to said, this I'm earth. I'm trying to come to earth to just to see just what's up. chill and see what I'm yeah. doing. Wow. So she like would grab my face like this, and she's like, "No, mama." Wow. She say, "No, no, no." Wow. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like. That's beautiful. at this point I'm like you be the mom. You're what? Right. Like what is this? Okay, yeah. <laughs> you be the mom. Uh, she could definitely if she could like she could be an amazing me, she does person. She is an amazing she, person. She oh man, she gets like she makes Mason's spirit and her dad's spirit like this because they're two of the same person like the most giddy like it's the coolest thing to watch it, you know? Like I don't know what the future holds for us cuz you know, they say like forever doesn't, nothing lasts forever. Mm-hmm. And people can always go on different journeys and things like that. But I'm, I'm happy where I am right now. And I'm grateful for where I am right now. And I don't need a piece of paper to tell me like I'm committed in this relationship. Right. I wear the ring. I'm here. Yes. This is what I'm here for. I'm loyal in this relationship. There's not been a relationship in my life that I've been more loyal in than this one. Right. So I'm definitely Both ways. in this to see what happens. But also, it's like it's like everything that I'm, I've been doing, so this is like my new journey. Like, you know, we didn't really touch base on like the fashion part. Yeah. I'm still model. Yeah. So I've been- Where are you now? You're happy, you're with your family. Yeah. You're doing amazing. I love the dynamics of everything. Yeah. So yeah, where so are you now? I still, like uh, the keep companies I work for is like Estee Lauder, which has like always been a dream job of mine. Um, hope to be contracted with them one day. Estee Lauder, contract a girl. Uh, one and day, then, it was a hey. dream. Uh, but I've, I've been able to, uh, I've done them. I still like do campaigns for people. Um, I can't think of them on the top of my head. Why am I brain farting? I think I I'm going to have you, a billboard. I with remember me. you had like Reebok campaign that was I, too huge. That had yeah, like GG and everybody. With, yeah, but that was not that was on the a journey. Few years. Okay, that was, that a, was a few years, years back. Ago. Okay. But I, um, I, I opened back up with like Macy's, so I'm going to have a beautiful. billboard with them. Amazing. Yeah, and then there's like... No big deal. I just have a <laughs> billboard with Macy's <laughs> nationwide. You know, whatever. So there's like different things. And I got to do that with my son. That's which is really cool. Insane. Um, and How then, beautiful. yeah. So there's different 
oh, different man. things in the works. Different things in the what works. What is I Am Shireen Love? Explain that and okay, like what you so hope I, to do with I it. I created I Am Shireen Love, and I was going to bring my sound bowls here, but okay. I, did, I didn't want to lug them out. <laughs> but I do have, I'm going on live on Sunday, and I'm doing my first ever sound bath virtual. Like, awesome. no one ever has heard that from me. So I actually performed the sound bath myself. So I'm Share in Love is just a space where creators can come together and I can help them like connect with their life purpose. And because I do medium work as well. Beautiful. And so really I've tapped, tapped into it. I've really tapped oh into it. Oh my God. It. Like when I've ghosted, yeah. I ghosted. So I, I can you in. like help me? Yeah. Really? I can. How did you even tap into that? Because that's something I'm actually really interested in. Pr- Prana. Wow. Prana became like my mentor. Okay, okay. I'm going to hit yeah. Prana up because like I really, we, we all obviously are spiritual beings and we all have these gifts. Mm-hmm. We all can see if we choose to see. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm ready to see more of that yeah. and tap into my power in that. You have it too. So that's beautiful. So it's like I, I do readings. I do those things. Okay. I um, do my now do sound bath healing and all of that stuff which is a lot of fun i've been doing it for myself um like helping to heal my vessel myself from the inside and i am also which we could talk about in the future i am partners with a manufacturer that has been in the industry for 45 years they currently own like the largest shareholder for zoomies and all of that stuff but they brought me on board to I create brands for influencers and celebrities and we pay for the manufacturing side, the everything. So I um, have a team. Um, one of my partners came from Laird's and Partners who does like all of the stuff for like Tom Ford, all of these things. Him personally, he's done this, his name's Stephen Bailey. He's done the aesthetics for Jewel, Pax, um, Katy Perry, Bonobos, like all these huge companies. Um, we're currently building brands for a few celebrities and i am also coming out with something a few things in 2021 that i'm really really excited about we can't you can't share too much just yet no but you'll be one of the first to know Okay, I'm gonna I be promise. one of when the I'm first to know. When I'm ready for that, know. I'll come right back here. Well, sis, we gotta talk because I have a couple things and I'm trying to get off the ground. Yes, but that's why I was Hello. like, this is gonna be beautiful because this is a conversation that we can have together, Amen. and I would love to. And I believe in this. I believe there is room on a table yeah. for everyone for sure. to live for sure. the way that and we see sure. yeah. those people living in the hills, yeah. like. Those people are not the only people that could be like this, but you got to tap in. You got to believe and uplift the community that you're around because you are who you hang around. That is a very true statement. Like people around you will leech you, will suck you dry. But if you're around people who are uplifting you, making you realize that you're worth something and wanting to build with you. Like if your community is not wanting to build with you, you're probably not around the right right community. That is the truth, that is the truth. Because not just the people that live in Beverly Hills who are born rich or born into a life of privilege. Or got there. Right, or got there. Not only they deserve to live that life, not everyone that's living in the hills that was born in a life of privilege, that was, you know, or worked their way up there, deserves to live that life we all deserve to live a life of luxury of abundance of love and of just everything that's positive well there's a shift going on in the world right now like um i'll get to that but there's like all those people they work to get there yeah and sometimes you know i'm not saying all of them sometimes some of them get lost and forget how they got there yeah So it's like, how can you reach a certain point in your life, not to everyone, but to some of them, and not want to help people, like, get to where you are? Like, that doesn't make sense. And I feel like, slowly, there is a real, I keep saying this, like a a conscience evolution happening, happening where we're all finally... Just, just opening our hearts and our minds up and our spirits up to see the lies of the world and to see the the shit that we've done to ourselves and to the world. The literally, like, it is 50 degrees outside in California. Mm-hmm. Never 
in the past four years has it been this cold? Yeah. Well, because there's, there's a shift. Change. There's a shift. There's a shift happening, happening. and Physically, it's more spiritually. just you know and. I'm not going to bring up political stuff, but no. like that world knows what's happening. Yeah. And they're masking they're everything to, yes. with the COVID, the this and the that. Making it about race. Ra- ra- making it about race and all of those things because of the fact that they're trying to hide you and like make you be afraid of the shift that's happening. Yes. And the shift that's happening is like the new age, yeah. the new era. Right. Like in 300 years, right. Jupiter and Saturn are in on December 21st mm-hmm. are going to be closer than it ever has. Whoa, in 300 years? In like over 300 years, wow. something like this. Wow. And it's going to shift the energy completely. Wow. And a lot of people are becoming more aware. Yes, we like, are. Like, you know, coming into this year, people are like, 2020 vision, 2020 vision. It's but true look us. around, you only see people's eyes. Yep. And that's Straight it. up, that's and you have it. to really connect, connect with, people. with people. Not because of what they look like, not because of what they do and whatnot. Like, twin, ooh, it was 2020 vision for sure. Yeah. Not in the way that we wanted, peaches and cream and fairy dust, but like the real, real. So many layers were peeled back. But it needed year. to happen. We needed it. And if you, you know, it's unfortunate because it, there's going to be this shift that happens where the the universe, God, and everybody, whoever you believe in, um, gave everyone the time that they've asked for. Yeah. How many people have prayed for more time with their family? Mm-hmm. You prayed for so much time with your family, you now have them 24-7, and then now you're like, when is everything going to go back to normal? Mm-hmm. We can't go back like, to that these normal. Are, these are prayers answered. And yes, people are dying, all of these things. And... Uh, like that that's like the the horrible part but at the same time there's beauty in this because it allows you to tune into what you want to do with your life yeah. if you lost a job don't be sad right. think of like how how can you pivot, can you pivot? Yeah. what's going to happen like what at really this point? fulfills you yeah. what really is going to help you like cuz i my 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 brother is in that situation where i was praying for him today where um he lost his job before COVID hit in March and then COVID hit and it was crazy and everyone went to lockdown. He's in London and he hasn't been able to find a job since. So, you know, people are living on their savings out here. And, um, and but if they I even like, have that, if they even have that. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm so grateful for the position and the, the, yeah, privilege that I have in my work where I, I am okay and I am still working, but I was praying for him to, to, for him to find whatever sets his full soul on fire and for him to be prosperous in something that really fulfills him that he can then pass on to the next generation whether it's a business whether whatever like really now is the time to dive deep into yourself to find out those things mm-hmm. you know so and it's it, all could it's be a, a scary, blessing in disguise it's right? a scary journey it is um because it's not what people are used to and like you know people are not used to sitting still Because you feel like the hustle has to be go, go, go. But sometimes the best hustle is to sit down and really be quiet with yourself Mm -hmm. and really understand what resonates with you. And because you do things in your life, like you meet people, like you don't meet people just to meet people. Like always for a reason. God, the universe, your angels, they guide you and, and place you in front of people to have interactions with people. If you just open up, and be open and have a full conversation, you'd actually realize that you that connection can actually help you like get to another level of your life. Yes. And that's what I felt like I had to go through. I went through my journey for 27 years of my life and more so because I'm still going on a journey. But till that wake up point so that I can meet those people so I could share my story. And with hopes that they're looking at this video and if they're still in that position, that they know that they could do it too. I have never been more financially well off in my life than I am now. And, and it's still growing. And it's not just for me. Like, I want that for you. Yes. I want that for everyone else around me yes. because everyone deserves that. Amen. And yeah. And I thank you so much because... Here we are, three years later, 
and you're a completely new person. And like you said, you meet people for a reason, for um, to ascend with and to grow with. And if you're not part of a community that is pushing you to grow, to, to be involved into something that's bigger than, than you, then you need to find new people. And I'm so grateful to have met you because just uh, before I close off, I met her, we went to your agency, and I ended up signing with that agency because they saw me and they liked me. And at the time I was, I was in the phase where I was like, I'm ready to be out of my agency and it just worked perfectly. So it's crazy how like, we met and all these different things happened after it and that also changed my life. So you do always meet people for a reason and for a season and know the difference. And I'm so grateful to know you. I'm so grateful to have seen all of this happen and to follow your journey and see this evolution into this high goddess, <laughs> your higher self, this beautiful, beautiful person that you are. And now you're you know, helping others bring it out of them. So I thank you so much. And thank you for coming here today and sharing your story, sharing your victory over circumstances. Yeah. Also, I just, I want people to understand, like, mm -hmm. don't be hard on yourself. Yes. You know, no matter what you're going through right now, this too shall pass. Like nothing lasts forever. You know, the memories that you have in the past where you were so happy, mm -hmm. those don't exist anymore, right? So mm -hmm. And then it's like times that you've been so sad, those don't exist anymore. So like tomorrow, what you feel today won't exist tomorrow if you don't allow it to exist in your life. So just continue on your journey and grow and learn about yourself every day. Because the more you get in touch with yourself, the more you'll learn to love yourself and the more the universe will give to you because you love yourself. Abundance mentality. Love yourself and you will only receive love and you will receive more and more. The law of attraction. Amen. I was going to ask you, like, what would you tell your 12-year-old self? But I feel like that, that was it. You uh, just told us. What I would tell my 12-year-old <laughs> self? You did the right thing. Amen. Because you wouldn't be right Amen. here having this conversation if you did it different. The good, the bad, the ugly. Love it's all... yourself for everything you are. Amen. I would Thank not you change so a thing. much. <laughs> Thank you. I love you, Sharina. I love you too. I love you. Thank you so much for an amazing talk. Guys, don't. Um, thank you so much for listening. R make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. In, if you're watching the video, make sure to do that and let us know what you thought of the conversation. What do you have to add to it? And like, always, obviously, sh uh, follow Sharina on Instagram yeah. at Sharina Guterres. S H A R I N A. G U T I E R R E Z. <laughs> and follow me at Mame Aj. That's M A M E A D J E I. And obviously, if you're listening to us, thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe as well and listen for our next episode next Wednesday. Thank you so much. Bye.